Hi everyone, uh, thank you for joining today's Hangout. Um, we're going to start today's presentation with a video. The only thing that evolves faster than technology is our expectations. We want everything. Better, easier, now. Suddenly, downloading an app feels like it takes forever. And in many parts of the world, data is still at a premium, with one megabyte costing up to 5% of a monthly wage. Let's face it though, until now, the alternative to native apps hasn't been great. Okay, well that was then, and what about today? When in uh, 2016 at I.O., which is our marquee developer conference, Google announced that it was pursuing a range of initiatives to improve the experience of the mobile web. And that's what we're going to talk about today. So I'm James, part of a new global team at Google called the Mobile Transformation Team. So we've been created to work with clients and agencies to encourage them to build the best mobile website experiences. And today I'm going to cover the technology that Google is working on to influence the future of the mobile web. And we're going to discuss that technology in the context of what an ideal mobile shopping experience can look like. Uh, we'll then dive into accelerated mobile pages, one of the initiatives we are pursuing, and share with you what it is, why you should care, and some case studies of successful early adopters. So just at this point, I just want to say, you know, during the presentation, please do let us know via the, the live chat if uh, we're moving too fast or if we need to stop at any point. So please do let us know. Hitesh is manning that live chat eagerly. So let's start. Let's think about the strengths and the weaknesses of the mobile web. So apps have always been king when it comes to engagement, but they can be hard to find, while the web is great at discovery but lacking in engagement. So to illustrate this, um, let's look at a 2016 study by Comscore, which looked at the top 1,000 apps and the top 1,000 mobile websites. So what you're looking at here are the results. So websites are represented in blue and apps in gray. So what's clear is that websites, if you look at the left-hand side, have far more visits per month in the reflection of the discovery, but the gap in engagement is far higher. So if you look into the right, you know, with the average number of minutes in apps far surpassing that of websites. So why does the web have such poor engagement? Well, we can kind of bucket it into four reasons. Okay, the first, including kind of poor performance, okay, waiting for pages to load. The second, the web can't really take advantage at this point in time of device capabilities, the powerful computer in your pocket. Ads are also slower to load on websites, and there's issues with UX, for example, with sign-in and checkout. So what Google is trying to do you know, is to move to the web where we have high engagement along with the already great discovery that you get from the web. And how we're doing this is with a range of innovations, such as accelerated mobile pages, which are lightning fast landing pages, progressive web apps, which is bringing native app-like experiences to the web, uh, easy sign-in with Credential Management API and one-touch payments with the Web Payments API. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to walk you through an example of a fast, seamless, reliable, and engaging mobile web shopping experience. And this is really going to show you how Google's model, which is focused on the user and everything else will follow, is at the heart of all these technologies I just mentioned. So let's start. So let's meet Brett. He's a 30-something-year-old professional working in Sydney. And Brett wants to buy a hoodie. Uh, as he leaves work one day, he goes to Google and he starts with the search for a fleece hoodie. In the search results, Brett clicks on the first organic link and East Combs category page loads amazingly quick, as if it was somehow already on his device with a bunch of different options. As he is heading out of the building, he sees an option that he likes. So he clicks on it, the item page loads insanely fast, but the item is out of stock. Brett sees that there's an option to be notified when the item is back in stock, so he clicks that, and a permission request appears asking if he wants to be notified when it's in stock. He clicks allow, just as he's heading down the stairs to the train. As he heads underground, uh, he doesn't notice that he loses reception. He scrolls down to read more about the sweater and sees other similar items, not noticing his lost reception. He clicks on one of the similar items, and the item page miraculously loads, even without reception. 
He checks it out, but ultimately decides he'll wait for the green one that he really likes. A couple of days later, it's the weekend, and he gets a notification from Chrome, telling him that the fleece he originally looked at is back in stock. He taps the notification, and Chrome takes him to Eastcom's item page. He likes the item, so he adds it to his car. He then hits checkout, and the site automatically logs him in. He then taps place order, which brings up the web payments interface. He reviews the info and taps pay. One tap pay. The order is placed, and he ends up on the order confirmation page. On the order confirmation page, the add to home screen prompt comes up the bottom of the screen. And considering he's just had you know, such a great experience, he thinks that he might buy more from this site, so he adds to home screen. Days later, when he's once again riding the subway without reception, he sees the icon on the home screen, taps it, and is able to browse the website for his next purchase in full screen. OK, so the above user journey aims to do one thing, which is radically improve the user experience. OK, it makes any website fast, you know, there was smooth animation and seamless navigation. It's reliable, fast loading, works offline and on flaky networks. It's engaging, can be launched from the home screen, and uses push notifications to re-engage. And I want to show, share an example that was just released at Google I.O. last week. Okay, which is WeGo, which is one of uh, Asia's largest travel search websites that has adopted all of the technologies that we've just covered in that example. So, I mean, I think the results there for WeGo speak for themselves. This is a company that's seeing real business results by providing a superior mobile customer experience. I think we can all agree that those results, you know, would impress any business. Increasing conversions uh, across browsers and also a significant improvement in user engagement, time on site, and the number of pages visited. So let's now talk about how you can help your company start the journey to delivering these great experiences. So making your landing pages last instantly with accelerated mobile pages. So I'm sure you know, on some of the other Hangouts, you may have seen these statistics before. But we know, and I think we can all ex you know, share with this experience, is that waiting for slow pages to load on the mobile web is a key frustration for customers, and it hurts businesses. These are some of the you know, common statistics that we see around the, the impact that a business can, can uh, see with slow load time. So 53% of users say they will leave a website if it takes longer than three seconds to load. And for every one second of load time or additional second of load time, we see a 7% drop in conversions. So real impact uh, on your business and things that are in your control to take care of. So this is where AMP can help. Okay. AMP 
For accelerated mobile pages, you know, load four times faster than the average landing page. You're know, loading in less than one second and using you know ten times less data. It's lightning fast. A couple of the other benefits listed there on screen. So look, users don't like to wait to reach the content they're trying to access. You know, and help and app helps you know reduce page abandonment. You know, caused by these uh, long page loading times. But what is app uh, and what is an app page? Okay. Essentially, it's just a simplified and streamlined landing page. If we go into some of the, the technical components of AMP, uh, technically, AMP is built using three core components. The combination of these three elements yields the super fast AMP experience. First, AMP HTML is just a modified version of existing HTML, which ensures the speed. Secondly, AMP JS implements AMP's best performance practices and manages resource loading to ensure that pages render or load quickly. Then there's the AMP cache, which fetches AMP pages and stores them in servers, you know, more closely located to the actual users, improving page performance automatically. The AMP cache also validates pages to ensure only the correct AMP pages are displayed to users. So they're the three kind of components you would kind of think about when we're talking about the technical aspects of AMP. But AMP does not actually require a large development team or budgets, okay, as it actually it builds on existing skill sets most developers already have. Okay, or it can be used by businesses using one of the most common CMS, content management systems or frameworks or templates for websites such as WordPress, which already have AMP plugins uh, that websites can use. You're just seeing here, for example, a result from you know March of this year to development teams you, that have already kind of uh, explored AMP. And 80 percent of development teams said they can build an AMP landing page in less than one week. Um, so it's you know really, if you think about it, AMP is just a it's a low risk option to prove the impact of speed. And we're not saying you have to AMP an entire website. The general idea is that. Um, you don't have to convert the entire website at once. We recommend analyzing and amping the portions of the site that make most sense. So just picking one page that we drive a lot of traffic to, or it could be you know, a landing page created for an upcoming campaign, and we create the original page, and we create you know, an AMP version of it, you know, that low risk, and then we're able to test the results in a very controlled environment to see what impact we have. I mean, I want to give you an example of a, you know, a large kind of e-commerce player, eBay, that everyone I'm sure knows. You know, eBay started, you know, about the end of last year, started amping a select number of pages, you know, low risk ones with relatively static content and began testing results. They've been so pleased that at IO last week, you know, it was announced that eBay would be amping every single one of their product pages worldwide. I think that's a real testament to the success of AMP in delivering great shopping experiences. So why should you care? Well, I think we've gone through, you know, a number of the reasons, you know, why and, and how this can improve a user experience when we think is speed. But I would encourage you, you know, to read, you know, if you don't uh, want to hear it from us, uh, read a recent article from Search Engine Lab that I believe Hitesh shared in the invite. You know, the, the title of the article is AdWords Best Kept Secret. Um, and I think, you know, in conclusion of reading that, it's very clear that you as an agency can ensure that you're providing, you know, your businesses a competitive ad advantage when it comes to AMP and ensuring that all the work you're doing and driving traffic to the site, you know, is put it in the best position to convert at a rate we know will deliver results to uh, excite and delight customers. So I quickly want to just share some success stories of those early adopters of AMP. So firstly, here you see a selection of businesses uh, that have been using AMP, okay? all of which have seen great results. Okay? For example, there's been you know, drop in bounce rates, you know, not surprisingly increase in new visitors, people coming back because they remember how great an experience they had. Uh, another fantastic you know, metrics that really businesses care about, for example, more time spent on site. The example I think is most relevant to the audience today and that I want to share is this case study. And we'll share this presentation after so you'll be able to read this in a little bit more depth. But this is Want Mobile, which is a, an e-commerce bespoke agency in the US that incorporated AMP 
into its proprietary development platform and started creating pages for a whole host of different businesses um, and industries, all which were trying to drive payments on their side. And I think the results are, are pretty you know, compelling when you think about it as an aggregate of all those companies they've been working with. So you've seen a 105% increase in conversion rates on AMP pages, a 31% decrease in bounce rate, and a 29% increase in click-through rates from search plan, uh, from search. So all really, really strong results that I'm sure that we would all love to share with the customer after some sort of solution that we you know, pitched to them and ultimately uh, implemented. So now into the, the final piece about you know, how you can get started when it comes to AMP. Um, and these are the kind of the four areas. I think firstly, you know, if you're excited about AMP, if you think it's an opportunity that your agency wants to explore further, uh, please contact your Google account team and let them know about your interest, okay, and that you want to learn more. Secondly, you know, start exploring the range and the, the breadth of kind of uh, information that's out there on this open source initiative around AMP. Review some of the documentation, the getting started guide, you know, or some of the easy to, to follow videos, um, or certainly share it with your development team at least. Uh, and this is then you can start, as I said, it's an easy way to start testing AMP. Um, pages. Just start developing and testing, picking a case study, um, and launching an example landing page. And that's once you have that, launch it. Point to AMP version from your website um, and start testing the results of AMP. So that's the end of the presentation. What we're going to do now is we're going to move over to Q&A. Okay, everyone, just to remind you there, for the last few minutes, if you do have questions, please just type them into the, the live chat. We can address them now. Alternatively, you know, we can always follow up if you are interested in learning more. Um, and as we said, you know, we will be sharing, you know, this presentation. Um, I'm happy to share any other kind of material um, once we let you know what you're interested in, in seeing.
Hi everyone, okay, so that's it for today. Thank you very much for your time, really appreciate it. Um, and as mentioned, please feel, you know, reach out to your Google account team if you have any uh, any questions. Thank you again.